The curator has told us a number of dark tales, but none that take us straight into the depths of the world that lies beneath. The House of Ashes may be an ancient mythological Sumerian underworld, but the creatures that dwell within are all but fictional beasts. After a reconnaissance mission in search of a chemical weapon storage went awry, a team of marines came face to face with what they believed to be vampires. On the surface, these vampires checked off all the telltale signs including hypersensitivity to light, immortality, sharp fangs, bat-like wings, infectious bites, using blood for nourishment, and vulnerability to being staked in the heart. For thousands of years, mankind had placed a label on these creatures and unwillingly served them as their next meals. Some revered them as gods, others as wild demons with an insatiable bloodthirst. It wasn't until an archaeological expedition in the 1800s that the true nature of the creatures was revealed. It would take another century or more before their secrets made it to the surface. These vampires weren't demons or gods, but rather extraterrestrial beings from the constellation known as Cetus. Many cultures had different names for this body of stars, but its association with a whale is the most well known. Before the alleged vampires were relegated to the blood-sucking beasts encountered in the ancient ruins, they were intelligent creatures who communicated in a harmonic language best described as musical in nature. They were capable of harnessing technology far beyond our own that allowed for intergalactic travel. This is where our first question arises. Why did they come here? Was it in the name of conquest or survival? Upon further scrutiny, it is found that the vampires, for lack of a better term, were desperately fleeing a plague that completely destroyed their way of life. This plague took the form of an invasive parasite that transformed its host into a nocturnal undead life form that fed upon fear itself. You see, the vampires were a civilized species before the onset of the plague. The voracious beasts encountered in the ruins were simply infected husks, undead hosts that barely resembled what they once were. It is unknown how the parasites initially infected the vampire population, but we know that once they did, they were forced to retreat from their galaxy and take refuge 3,800 feet below the Earth's surface. By the time they landed at their new destination, it was too late. The parasites were all too efficient. The initial method of transmission was unknown. However, based on our observations, we can conclude that an effective method of infection was via bites. Interestingly enough, infected individuals rapidly grew sharp fangs that served as syringes that transmitted the parasite to its next victim. Once the victim was bitten, the parasite would eventually take control of its host, killing it in the process. Due to its natural sensitivity to light, its host would also take a liking to the darkness. One would think that the vampire population would have died out due to lack of nourishment. However, their host's ability to secrete life-preserving fluids that can stand the test of time to form cocoons proved invaluable. Since their arrival, the parasites would patiently await loyal fanatics, unsuspecting explorers, archaeologists, and unfortunate lost souls that had discovered their underground city. Armed with biological alarms that would alert them of potential prey, they slumbered in a state between life and death for untold millennia. So now that you know the truth, what will you call the aliens from Cetus? Vampires or victims? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, it's the Inhuman One, signing out.